Well, hi guys, what's up? We are currently in the high tunnel. I came out here to water everything. It looks great. Uh, I will show you the onions, which you can kind of see behind me. They're doing beautiful. Uh, the beets and radishes and turnips have all started to sprout. I'm still waiting for the cabbage, kale, and carrots to start sprouting. So everything is looking great. It's starting to grow and it makes me so happy. It is nice and warm in here. It's kind of chilly outside today, which is just, I mean, that's winter, right? Nice and warm and then cold and then snow and then rain and then warm. And it's just a big tease. <laughs> well, um, I got a couple things done in here. I had originally that door back here. I had the lock for the top door on the outside and that just wasn't really practical because when you come in through the front here and you want to go out the back, you would have to go around and that was just kind of stupid. So I put the latch on the inside of the door. That way I can access the back from the inside, which is nice. And like I said, I watered everything. You can see the onions, how happy they are. They're looking really lovely. I have three different types of onions. I have white, yellow, and red in here and they'll grow for the next six to eight weeks until I'm ready to start planting tomatoes and peppers in here. And then they should be ready to rock. So I'm hopeful because I've never had a really great onion harvest. Uh, they've always been kind of small. And um, I talked to the Amish who grow these beautiful onions and they said, lots of water and loose soil. So we have lots of water and loose soil. So keep your fingers crossed. I would be so happy if I actually got a decent onion harvest. But over here I have radishes and beets and turnips. Just one little row of turnips. That's all I had the seeds for. And also my family is like really weird with things that they haven't tried before. Sometimes they'll love it. Sometimes they won't. If I see that they like these turnips, then come fall, I'll plant a whole bunch of them in here. Uh, and, but like I said, I have more beets that are along the front of this bed. They're just coming up, but the kale hasn't really started coming up yet. Oh, my lettuce and my bunching onions really hasn't started coming up yet. And my carrots, my cabbage hasn't started coming up yet either. So hopefully they'll come up soon. This bed over here is the bed of screen topsoil that I got. And although there's like no weeds in there, it hasn't sprouted anything yet. These two beds are the beds that I got for free from here and everything's germinating except for the kale. But that being said, sometimes cabbage, carrots, and kale can be slower to germinate. So I'm not going to say that this soil is um, devoid of life yet. We're going to give it a little while longer. But that's why I wanted to get in here early and plant things now because once I seed start my peppers, which I'm going to do this week, and I come in here and I plant peppers in here, if they don't grow and they die, a small part of my insides will die as well because I'm so, I'm so married to the assortment of peppers and tomatoes that I grow every year. If I, if my peppers died, I, I just, I'm not sure how I would handle it. I, I don't think it would be well. I don't think it would be good because I love my peppers and I love my variety. So I'm not planting all of my peppers in here but I am gonna plant some of my hotter varieties in here. And uh, I have ordered Jalafuegos. They're jalapenos, but they're like really, really big. I wanna plant them in here to see how they do. Hot peppers usually like it very, very hot. So this should be a really great setting. This is gonna be my experimentation this year. Uh, I'm going to put tomatoes in here as well. I got, I did get a couple hybrids, I think. One or two might be hybrids. I got a Heinz processing tomato. I'm not sure if that one's considered an heirloom or if it's still considered a hybrid. Once, in case you didn't know, a hybrid tomato is just a tomato that was basically purposefully cross-pollinated. So you're getting traits from both tomatoes. And once you've create, once you've bred that a couple times, then you're gonna get a consistent tomato. There's nothing weird, there's nothing you know genetically modified about it. It's just cross-pollinating two types of tomatoes. Same with peppers or whatever, whatever you have, broccoli, you name it. You're just cross-pollinating them so that you're getting traits from both parents. And so basically, once you have 
a hybrid for so long and it's been continuously grown year after year after year for five years, 10 years, 20 years, it's now an heirloom because every heirloom that we grow has started as a cross-pollinated plant. So that's just a little fun tidbit of information. Uh, so I'm not really sure if the Heinz processing tomato that I got is actually considered an heirloom or if it's still considered a hybrid, but it was created by the Heinz tomato, um, the Heinz ketchup people. And being as how, you know, I live in Pittsburgh, well, in the P Pittsburgh region, uh, I just had to get my hands on this tomato because I feel like that's part of my heritage, right? <laughs> but I will see how that does. It's supposed to be great for sauce and slicing. So I'm very interested in that one. I also got a yellow Jubilee and I'm pretty sure that one's a hybrid. The reason I did get the couple hybrids is because they tend to do better in a indoor growing situation like this. So that's why I got those. I ordered my seeds finally and I'm expecting them anytime. So I'm really excited. I'll go over all the seeds that I bought with you guys when they come in. It is time now for me to start planting tomatoes and peppers, and I do have some that I'm going to start this week. Hopefully my other seeds will come in so I can just get them all done, but it's finally time, so I'm really excited about that. But in the meantime, I got to go work on this fencing project, and I figured I'd chat with you a little bit on the forefront of this video because it's very windy and it's very chilly, so I'm probably not going to put you guys on a time lapse. I'm just going to go out there and work and get it done, and then I'll show you afterwards what I got accomplished. Also, two of our little piglets are on their way to Tennessee. Uh, our first round of piglets, Peaches Babies, they're finally starting to move off to their homes, and I am just, it's just... It always amazes me how great my return customers are. And sometimes I'll have a customer that will take a year off or something like that. Maybe they'll go find a more inexpensive pig to raise. And then they come back and they're like, you know what? We just couldn't stay away because the flavor is so vastly different. And um, I don't price my piglets to the cheapest end. I price my piglets to the high end, especially in the winter. And that's because it requires more work out of me. In the winter, my pigs come in. So when I have winter litters that sell in the spring like right now um, I have to clean up after those pigs all the time you have a higher risk of loss when it's cold outside and you know you have to micromanage those births you really have to be intensive plus with the pigs being in they are going to utilize a higher grain consumption so the cost and the time involved is just a lot higher and that's why I usually and plus I follow my market prices now I'm not at market prices I'm above market price but I also have something that you can't go to the market and buy. So that's just a little bit about my pricing and what I do with my pigs. But it works out great because year after year, I have faithful returning customers. And these, um, these folks came this morning and picked up their piglets. And they're off to Tennessee for the second year in a row. And I just think that's so cool. So um, yeah, anyways, I need to go hop on this fence project so I can try to get it done. Because I really like to put the sheep out during the day. So let's go see how much I get done. Hey guys. Hi. Harley and I have been busting our butts all day. <laughs> Jeff helped hang the gate. So yeah, this is what we've got accomplished. There you go. So as you can see, we went right along the driveway. It looks really, really nice. So this part here, <laughs> It kind of dips in, and that's because I used a locust post with the gate here, and I wasn't taking into consideration that the post would be on this side of that post, and then they go into the middle of that post. So it looks really kind of stupid. So I need to get longer nails, and then I'll pull these off and put them on the inside of that so it doesn't jut in like, like that. Holly, can you get this off of Loki? Anyways, here it is. I think one more solid day of work and we'll have this done. It's going to go across towards the equipment building there and then it'll come down and tie in on this side of that firewood. I hope the wind's not messing with the microphone. I'm trying to cut my hand over it. But yeah, this is how it looks. I come in the barn out of the wind so I could finish this video up. Guys, 
That is a workout. It doesn't seem like it is, but it is a workout getting that put in. I am so happy with how it's turning out, even with the little funky part by the gate. I'll get that fixed. It'll be fine. So one more day of work and we will probably have that pasture clinched up. I think, I hope. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a pretty chilly, so I'm not sure if tomorrow is going to be the day I work on it. It's going to be 37. We'll see how motivated I am to get it done. Tomorrow might just be an inside work day. Uh, there's going to be plenty of nice days coming that I can play outside. So I guess that's going to just finish up the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am wishing that it wasn't so windy outside so that I could, you know, let you guys watch us work. But I just know this tripod would have just, it would have just fallen over a thousand times if I had you out there. So. And plus, the wind in the microphone is not a good thing. But if we, if it's not windy the next time we work on it, I'll make sure I catch all that footage. Otherwise, yeah, one more thing. Almost checked off the done list. Almost. So many more projects to get done before summer gets here. So I guess that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys had a great day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.